Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. How are you, peeps? What a weekend. Hectic as hectic can be. Uh, didn't get a chance to do one yesterday, guys. I had the Jack's birthday. Sorry, that took priority. Um, we all were setting up, getting the party sorted out in the park and all that. Greet and meeting, catching up, sorting dinner, just, yeah, smoked at the end and just crashed out and just missed out. Didn't get a chance to check anything else out, so yeah. Unfortunate, had a little bit better of a time today, had dramas, dodgy Volkswagen dealer trying to stooge me out of more cash. Um, wasn't gonna buy it, they keep, I think they, half the time they, they uh, prey on people that don't know what they're doing, so it's a bit disappointing to see from my VW dealer. Very average. Um, yeah, so yeah, Jack's birthday was huge success. Everyone that come, awesome. You get some, some fantastic presents. He was just wrapped, he had a ball in the sand pit on the slide, just going nuts. Usual two year old stuff, just yeah, had a ball, sat there and ate a whole packet of puffed like Cheetos, just smashed them. I don't know how he wasn't sick as a dog last night. Chocolate cake on top, uh, sausage rolls, Oreo, it just went to town. He just had full range to go nuts and he went nuts and he survived, so good on him. Little Champo, was his little once a year splurge, I guess. On your birthday, you gotta do it, why not? So yeah, that was really cool and yeah, very happy, very happy parents. Uh, he's a great kid, couldn't be, couldn't be uh, more happier to have him in our lives. So yeah, very special day for us and we were both very happy. So yes, very cool. Now, two things we're gonna talk about tonight. I'm gonna get straight into the big one. It's huge, absolutely monumental news. Anyone in fishing knows that it is absolutely ridiculously hard, A, to break into the pro circuit in America. Uh, you've got to throw a ton of money in, to get up through the ranks just to get into the elite version of the Bass Pro. So the, you've got you've got the three ones, you've got MLF, you've got FLW, and you've got <clears throat> Bassmaster. Bassmaster and FLW have been around for quite a long time. I'm not sure which one was first. Um, FLW was uh, created by, uh, I think he's a, at least a multi-millionaire guy. He, Put out the money for that. It's a different, different, whole different kettle of fish. How yeah, they fish. Um, they use nets. They used to have coast co anglers on there. That only just changed this year. Um, they have the Forestwood Cup, which is three hundred grand. The money in it. They have less comps for the year, but they seem to have more money for the comps. Uh, the Bass Masters, and now FLWs all across the world as well. They're in South South Africa, uh, Japan. Everywhere, same as Bassmaster. Bassmasters in Australia. They Bassmaster run the Brim Series in Australia. I mean, they do. They're also connected to the Barra Series or somewhere along like along the lines there. But yeah, they're very they're invested in it a little portion, not as probably much as we like. But they're sort of they've got enough a lot of battles in America to fight for the sponsorship dollars. Um, and then MLF, which is the new new guy, which is um, Duckett. Fishing rods, he's the main guy behind it, he started it off. It's more anglers have more of a percentage, more of a say in what happens. Um, it's supposed to be the best of the best. They went hunting for the best of the best. Uh, Johnny Morris from Bass Pro Shops chucked in $10 million to be part of it last year to get like basically naming rights for it. Last year, uh, or this year, for when it when it became basically official. And it seems to be going pretty well. It's got a different setup. They don't have to keep the fish to take them back to weigh them in. They basically have a adjudicator on the boat with them that weigh them. And then that goes onto a live scoreboard and then those fishermen can see what everyone else is doing on the live scoreboard. So if, they, if they're catching fish and they know someone's close behind, they can have a look on the scoreboard and see how far away they are if they're catching fish. Vice versa, so totally different setup. Anyway, Bassmaster, probably before MLF come out, uh, it was, I, I'd have to say probably probably the elite competition. And we've got one Aussie in there, Carl Jacobson, who's been in there fighting to get back into it. He got into it and then out of it. 
and you have to go back through the bottom circuits to get all the way up, which is a huge feat in itself just to get back in there. And he's, I've had him in my fantasy fishing all year. Uh, I reckon he's fantastic. Uh, uses Ian Miller rods, who's a great Australian rod builder and an awesome, just a fantastic guy. I've, I've talked to him through, through email and like, when you email a company, you don't expect the owner of the company to email you back, especially someone as renowned as him, and he got back, and he was just so like a really nice guy. So two great Australian fishing um, parts of us. Uh, one, one and probably our best fisherman we've ever had to go and represent us in this, and then another, our best Australian rod builder. So huge thing for Australia, um, and he struggled all year, he's, he's sort of, He's got there and got close and then missed the cut on, and just missed it. And I think the last tournament before this one, on day two, he was had a really big run in the morning and then just didn't get anything in the afternoon, couldn't find him in the afternoon. And they all come in and went, and then he missed the cut. So he dropped from like 14th all the way down to 40th or something. And that's how quickly it can change. In a couple of hours, you can go from top 10 to out of the 50. It's really, really tough. Uh, get a hundred and something anglers fishing on one lake and you're trying to get in the top 10 to make some decent money very very tough um, I've read articles on it on these guys and you hear the stories these guys when they're coming up like Carl and I know he's done it sleeping in their utes at the uh, boat ramp because they've got no they can't afford to pay for a hotel room for like months on end just all they've got is fuel money basically fuel money and then what they've got and they've got to get there and whatever their sponsors give them fishing gear wise well that's going to last on the season because uh, they've got no money to spare because they're all they're doing is food and petrol to get to the because they all drive from one from one lake to the next so very very tough um and he's done an amazing job to get with and he won he finally got through this weekend he was in there and he got to top three and I was so wrapped to see him in the top ten. It was just awesome news. And then I woke up this morning and I was on the ferry and I'm looking and I'm looking at Instagram and there he is. He's got the trophy in his hands. First ever Australian to win a Bassmaster Elite Series comp. Just uh, good on him. He's just the nicest guy. Replies on Instagram. Just a just a really nice typical Aussie guy. Loves fishing to the bone. Uh, I couldn't be happier for him. It was his birthday yesterday in Australia and today in America. Um, and I think in two weeks time he gets married to his girlfriend, so to his fiance. So, mate, good on you. You've done a pr Australia proud. Like, I, I don't think anyone can really understand how hard it is. I've read the articles and see what you guys go through, and it is just blood, sweat, and just. Every, it's all or nothing, and you sleep, eat, dream, fish. And it's finally come through, and to be the first Australian is just monumental uh, achievement. Uh, those bass, it looks easy when you just watch them on telly and they're just on YouTube and they're just catching fish. I guarantee you it ain't, and everyone that's fished a tournament knows that it never works like that, and it's those guys that do it consistently are just freaks. So. Um, awesome, great news, just could be wrapped. So yeah, big, big ups to him. Uh, it's just fantastic for him, his family, his sponsors, and for Australia. And all us fishers that dream of, dream of what it would be like to go and do what he just did. So yeah, awesome buddy, great job Carl. Um, and the last one, it's a short night. There wasn't a little, real lot in there, there was a couple of things, but no, I just wanted to spend a bit of time on, on Carl and how good he did, so that was pretty awesome. And the last one I want to talk about is KFC. The Donut Chicken Burger. <laughs> so cheddar buns, you've got two Krispy Kreme original glazed donuts as the bun, or you can get it in an open pack meal with donuts with your chicken. Wow. Hello, heart attack. Um, yeah. What can I say? KFC, I mean, we all remember when they had the two bits of chicken with as the bun, and then all the other stuff in there. I remember that a couple of years ago, which was just ridiculously, like, deaf, deaf on a stick. 
Uh, I don't see how this is. It's going to be sweet with the savoury, so I think they're, well, they're going along. There's a few waffles, chicken and waffles. It's huge in, in the States. Uh, I've had it. It's actually quite nice. That's sweet with the savoury. It's sort of a good mix. So I'd, as much as I'd hate to say it, I'd, I'd actually try it just to see what it's like. Um, KFC is good, best chicken I've had, so yeah, it'd be definitely interesting to see. But two donuts, fillet of chicken in your burger. Hello, cholesterol. And that's about it. How can I not? How can you not finish on that? <laughs> the donut chicken burger from KFC. If you're heading to the states, go in and get a photo of one because that is Instagram worthy, no doubt. Very, very cool. Very, very sickening. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it probably tastes wicked. Anyway, that's it for me. Had a great day yesterday, obviously. Awesome news to Carl. Congratulations and good luck with the wedding. That's the next big adventure. And he goes into the final, the championship round, having a win on his belt and a lot of confidence. And I, and I hope he gets up there and gets in the top 10 of that. That'll be even better. Just finish strong, buddy, and start next year and be a threat. Anyway, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, have a fantastic Monday night. Hope work wasn't too rough on you today. You haven't been nursing a sore head all day, but fingers crossed. Tomorrow's another day. Tuesday, nearly the hump day, nearly through the middle already. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're coming home, going out, or crashing on your bed. See you tomorrow. See ya.